I mean, just starting off with the 20s this week and you know, the news, just explain all that from your perspective. Um, well, I thoroughly enjoyed the last two years. I got a huge amount out of it as a coach and, and obviously um, to see some really good, talented Welsh uh, players coming through has been fantastic. To be part of that has been fantastic. But um, ultimately, uh, you know, do, doing two roles has been uh, a huge amount to juggle. Uh, I've had a huge amount of support from the Scarlets to, to carry on with the 20s. Uh, and likewise for the 20s to, to for my work with the Scarlets but I think now's come the time where I need to concentrate on on uh, the, the one role and obviously the full-time role is, is with the Scarlets and it's time now to um, to sort of repay some of the uh, the support they've given me to allow me to do the 20s and, and to carry on with something I thoroughly enjoyed and now it's time to concentrate on, on the Scarlets. Now obviously going out on something of a high, you must have enjoyed it. Yeah it was great, you know um, <laughs> I thought it was going to be uh, tough to match the season we had before in terms of the World Cup, um, beating New Zealand and, and getting to a semi-final and finishing third in the world was, was huge achievements and we were very ambitious that we wanted to at least make a semi-final. We felt we had the group to make a semi-final. Um, but you know, once you get there and you, you remember quite how challenging that tournament is, um, so to go that one step further and to make a World Cup final was, was uh, you know, something that we were all extremely proud of and something that We'll all remember um, being heavily involved in, but ultimately we probably 20 minutes, 25 minutes away from um, something really special, but still but really proud of the achievement that, and, and everybody involved. And in the end, was it maybe the, the power and strength and depth of, of England, but that doesn't take away from things like beating South Africa, does it? No, not at all. I, I think it probably is fair to say um, uh, England had a, a very strong bench. Um, we probably missed our opportunity just after half time with the yellow card we needed some points in that period and we knew England would finish strong um, we had a number of players who'd played a huge amount of rugby up to that point um, and like you said we, we had a, a massive ask to, to get the South Africa result that we did that was a real tough game and a number of players um, recovered um, but probably didn't fully recover in, in terms of getting another 80 minutes what is five days later um, and, and England, like I said, had enough strength on that bench to come on and, and they overpowered us in the last 20, 25 minutes. And we've, we dropped off a few tackles, which we hadn't done all tournament. And uh, in a number of areas, we came unstuck. So England thoroughly deserved the win. Um, I think it's a great achievement for us to make a first ever World Cup final at that age group. And hopefully it's something that, you know, a, a platform is there now for, for it to be built on. And um, with Byron Hayward coming in, somebody who I've worked with for the last two years and has been extremely supportive of myself, uh, I know he'll do, he'll do an excellent job and, and drive the same uh, same standards and so on, and, and I'm sure they'll be um, successful in New Zealand. So nice to be going out on a high, I suppose. But what have you taken out of the last two years of the twenties? Um, it's been great for me to to have a slightly different experience in, in a slightly different role. Um, I'm, I obviously thoroughly enjoy uh, forwards coaching. I thoroughly enjoy head coaching, and um, and that was a great experience for me to do that for two years with, a, with an international team. It also Provided me with with the challenge of a unique competition where at the, in the World Cup where you're you're playing every four or five days. So how you manage your squad and how you create your environment is I extremely um, important for you to have any chance of being successful. So great challenges and and you know I also um, thoroughly enjoyed working with some very very talented rugby players from all four regions and some guys that I think um, will come through and as we've seen with the Lions tour recently boys who've come through the system and I think you'll see more and more boys who come through the system. With your level of knowledge, who are the people that the fans should be tolerant of, that we should be excited about, who should we be looking out for? Um, well, you know, there's a number of, of great Scarlet players that were at that um, tournament. Uh, for me, you know, the Jordan Williams has been spoke about a lot. Um, Jordan's fully aware there's a couple of areas of his game he, he, he needs to improve to make that next step up to regional rugby, but he is quite a talent. Um, People kick loosely to him. He, you know, he can he can really make uh, make opposition defences pay, like like he did for us during the World Cup. So he's won. I was very impressed with um, Steph Hughes uh, at 13. We we lost Corey Allen before the tournament, and we thought that was going to be a huge gap and a huge um, uh, boots to fill, if you like. But uh, Steph stepped up and uh, and did a, did an excellent job. Um, so again, another good scarlet for the future. Uh, Rodri Williams, the nine, another one who who was superb throughout the tournament. So we, we, I think we're quite fortunate that we've got a number of good players coming through. There, there's a few back I examples. We've also got um, the likes of Calvin Jones in the second row, um, Gareth Thomas in the front row, guys who played a lot of rugby at that, that tournament and, and 
Canada and Six Nations, and I'm sure will come through for for um, the Scarlets and regional rugby over the next couple of years. How do we expect to see them coming through with the Scarlets? You've, you've got a reasonably settled forward squad. I mean, it's going to be hard for them to break in. Yeah, and and, and that's how it should be. You know, I mean, they will get an opportunity, um, but they'll have to earn that opportunity, and I'm confident they will. And they're they're going to be putting themselves against some good players. There's no doubt about that. What can we expect from the Scarlets pack this year? There's going to be a fairly heavy foreign influence on on paper, at least. Uh, I think it'd be a good mixture of the, of the both, really. You know, I think um, over the last season or two, we signed where we needed to sign, where we needed to strengthen. I think those signings have, have been proven. Um, the second row pairing of George, George and Joe Snyman, have, have, you know, have been been excellent for us and, uh, and have added a little bit to that area that we needed. Um, you know, likewise with with the other players that we've signed, and I'm excited to see um, John Barkley on the on the field there for us. I think he's going to be a great addition to the squad. He's going to add some good leadership in what is a very young squad and a, and a relatively young pack of forwards. Um, so I think we've got a nice mixture there, and then obviously our our own, uh, if you like, homegrown youngsters coming through, and the ones that are more established, Ken Owens, people like that, who I think um, you know really looking forward to a, a good season ahead. Got some interesting choices at Hooker. You lose Matthew Reese, but you've still got plenty of strength there. Yeah, definitely, and, and you know it's, it's great to see uh, Ems uh, go to Japan, and, and um, you know I thought to do himself a world of good, to show him what quality he is, and he's been sat here for a couple of years behind Ken and, and Matthew Reese, but he's been extremely patient. He's worked extremely hard, and um, the number of times where you know you're not deciding between two hookers, you're deciding between three. When you add to that Kirby and now young Darren Harris, two twenties hookers that I've worked with. In the last two years, um, we've got some depth there, but you know, two of those are 20, 21 year old, year old players. Um, and like Samson, yes, they'll come through, but they'll take time, and we've got to give them that time. Um, and people have got to be patient with them, but um, they are working hard and they, and they will come through eventually, there's no doubt about that. I suppose, in some ways, the most interesting decision is going to be a number nine. Yeah, again, another position of strength. Um, yeah, I think uh, Alid's. Sort of Really, really uh, shone this season from uh, another young, very young player who's come through and played well for the Scarlets. Um, uh, Gareth Davis then again adds huge um, impact when he's come off the bench. He's great broken field running scrum half, so he adds another dimension to us. And young Rodri Williams has had a superb World, World Cup and is maturing beyond his years. He surprises me. You know, you, you feel like you're dealing with a 25, 26 year old experienced pro, not a not a 20 year old kid who'd actually played the Heineken Cup two seasons ago and you know, it just shows again the youth and, and the quality of those players that come through. How much of a boost is it going to be first of all Jonathan Davis and everything he's been through in the last uh, couple of months also Reese Priestland you'd expect to be back fully fit just talk about the impact those two can make on the Scarlets as a whole. Oh, well you know first of all John I mean it's so, so pleased for him because he's, he's a model pro works extremely hard and uh, from the little time I've worked with him and He's a good leader, and again, you forget how young he is. Um, but w what a lion series he had, um, and I think he'll come back and add uh, that experience uh, uh, that he's now gained on top of the experience he already had at international rugby through his British Lions experiences. And I, th I know he'll bring that back to this squad, and this squad will thrive on him coming back into uh, into regional rugby when he does after a well-deserved rest. Um, likewise, Reese, you know, Reese has been pretty much working solid since since the injury, you know, and that's the Again, the mark of the of the, um, of the professional. Uh, you know, I popped in a couple of times when I had a week or so off when I got back, and Reese was working extremely hard with the with the staff here to be back fit. And he's not far away from doing that. And, and I think we all know the capability of Reese Priestland when he's back back fit. He's unfortunately got injured when he did. Um, otherwise, I'm I'm pretty certain he would have been pushing for a Lions place uh, had he not got injured early in the season. But uh, he's a he's a hard nosed pro, and, and he's working hard, and, and it's. It's what's next with Reese, and that's you know the, the pleasing thing about it. I know overall with the Scarlets, you obviously reached the playoffs last year, so that was a breakthrough for you. It's something you're going to be looking to build on. Yeah, I mean, uh, it was our our objective again to make a semi final to to make top four. We scraped in there in the end. Um, you know, we had a great run of I think it was nine wins out of ten games at the tail end of the season, and then. Uh, an unexpected Trefiso to performance here that, that perhaps rocked us a little bit going into the semi-final. Um, so w we, we want to be a group that's far more hard-nosed this season. Um, the, the, the players have settled into us, and most of the new signings that we made from, from last year, and now we need to, to become a tougher, a tougher group mentally. Um, and I think 
where we, we've been capable this season of beating anybody on our day. We've perhaps also been capable of, of, of losing to anybody on our day. And I think that's where we need to improve. We need to become more consistent, more hard-nosed about our approach and, and demand a certain standard that we never go under. Um, and I know the coaching group share that same philosophy. So I'm hoping we'll see some, some steps forward in, in, in those areas. So you're a very tough Heineken Cup group. Is that, is that a barometer to measure yourselves by? Or is that almost something that you, know, you sort of think, well, we've got greater fish to fry than that? Oh, no, I mean, you know, what, what an experience, again, for a young squad to go and play in Claremont again, you know, something that for all of us was an unbelievable experience. Um, Ras and Metro, the same, Quinns, you know, some top, top sides in Europe and sides that the players will want to, to put themselves against. And, and like I say, we get a number of things right, we can cause those sides problems, but we also know if we don't, if we're not on top of those things, when you play that kind of quality, you can get um, burnt if you're not quite where you need to be. I mean, Claremont was a good example for us for 25 minutes or whatever it was, we were very much in the game, scored first, uh, and then obviously we got the red card and, and, the, and the wheels came off a little bit. So we'll need a little bit of, of luck and we'll need to be on top of our game, but what an exciting experience for, for these young pros.